Now, I think I know just the guy who might have an opinion on this. So please welcome to the show America's accountant, Daniel Geltrude. Dan, thanks for uh, being on. Thanks, All right. Guys. I mean, if there's anything you think of that you just don't need right now, I would say that would be it, right? I understand uh, what their issues are, and I, I laud them for that. But uh, we're in pretty dicey times here. Look at the markets today. What are your thoughts on how this all shapes up? Well, if this people's convoy turns out to be as big as some hope it will be, Scott, it is going to be massively disruptive. I can't even emphasize enough what this potentially can do to our economy. Look, I know a lot of business people out there and they're doing OK related to manufacturing. They're doing OK related to getting their products into port. Their biggest problem is is trucking goods. Now, if we have this type of disruption, we can't we listen, we can't afford to lose one truck to be out right now. If you literally have trucks from all over the country that are not going to be delivering goods for a week, two weeks, whatever that is, Scott, it is going to be a massive disruption. And, and hold on to your hats because inflation is going to skyrocket if this happens. I mean, like it's not already. That's the problem. I sat here on this desk doing our news report all day today and food and fuel prices are going through the roof and we really haven't done anything yet. I mean, obviously there's been some movement over there, but you, you have even more, if you, ha if, if, I know this is all if, but if we have uh, more of a conflict over there, it just goes from a, an incursion to some sort of larger conflict. And at the same time, in a week's time, we have a lot of the truckers off the road and clogging up the nation's arteries. Dan, I mean, that's, an, that's a recipe for disaster. And as I said earlier, we, when we first started the show, you know, the Fed might have a plan, but they could get punched in the face. And this could be that punch in the face. Yes, it could. This is the perfect storm that's brewing, right? Because you have a potential major international event coinciding with a, a domestic event that could really throw us into a hyperinflationary period. And what do I mean by that? We are talking about a sudden skyrocketing of the costs of, of goods and services. Now, we're, we're really getting to the point, as you alluded to earlier, Scott, where people simply can't afford the essentials. If we go down this path, this is where we're talking about, I'm gonna use this word with intention, a revolution. This is where you could have people really get to the point where it's not just uh, trucks headed to Washington, D.C. You could have a lot of citizens going to Washington, D.C. and demanding that the federal government do something. You know, when, when Granny starts to freeze to death and she can't eat, you'll definitely see some motivated people show up somewhere because... That's the real deal. And like I said, you're right. In, in the monologue, we do have anecdotal evidence, and there is no study out yet, but there will be, I'm sure, about how folks have now started to have to trim what they're buying in, in the normal, everyday you know, lives to pay for that tank of gas. I mean, I filled up for the first time since I can remember yesterday, and I paid over 70 bucks to fill that tank up. And I mean, it's now starting to really be noticeable, and I think that that's something that we're going to have to be worried about going forward. So, I mean, boy, this is a not fair question too, but how do you think this all ends if it's not a revolution? How do you think the Fed can handle it? And I mean, where are we going from here? Well, if history is any indication of what the future may be, Scott, I, you and I were both young when this happened. But if you go back to the late 70s, right, where inflation was running out of control and interest rates were going higher and higher, what did Volcker do? He, he had a massive increase in, uh, in interest rates in order to gain control over inflation. And what happened then? we were thrown into a recession. So outside of a major revolution of the people rising up, I think that we could absolutely be headed into a recession that, that quite frankly, a lot of people don't think can happen. I've been asked a number of times, could we really be going down the path of where we were in the late 70s into the early 80s? And I said, of course it could happen. But, but what were the events that were going to trigger something like that? I think those events have arrived. Now, whether it plays out to that, to that level, Scott, I, we don't know. Maybe things calm down with the Ukraine and Russia, and maybe the truckers don't 
you know, have a sick out or, or block up all the nation's highways so goods and services can't get through. So there is a path to get out of this. But the way it's aligning right now, it does not look good. Two things. I think one of them is the big takeaway for me is how does the government react? How does the Fed react? I mean, the reactions here are going to be huge. And the other huge thing is I can't get over your tie. I love it. Absolutely love it. So thank you very much for wearing well, it. Well, Scott, listen, I am now going to convert myself over to America's accountant. All right. <laughs> That's so bad. It's good. All right. Thank you very right. much. It's Daniel Geltrude. Right. He's America's accountant. Thanks for being on the show.